The story about Melvin. So Melvin was really known at Roblox community around 2006 to 2008. But later that year Melvin would pass away. For his honor Roblox would make Melvin a ghost shaggy. But the item later got removed. It is said that once every year one Robloxian will be teleported to Melvin's game. There they will have to walk through a long scary hallway and at the end of the hallway there will be a ghost shaggy floating. And when you try to leave your account will be terminated. The story about Fur and NY. So Fur and NY stands for Annie. Annie was a 10 year old girl. But Annie had an abusive mother. It is said that Annie asked really creepy questions like, Have you tried Red Dog? Where do you live? Do you like rusty nails? And other creepy stuff. Because when Annie broke a plate, her mother forced Annie to eat her own dog alive. A couple of days later someone joined Annie's game. And they noticed a red stripe on her face. She was completely quiet until she said it's hot in here, and left after that. Then the sky turned dark and the house set on fire. It is said that Annie set her house on fire after her and her mother get into a heated argument. She had no other choice and set her house on fire killing both her and her mother. It is said that Annie's soul is still on Roblox haunting other players. So stay safe out there. The story about Guest 666. So Guest 666 was the Roblox players back in 2017. It is said that Guest 666 had admin every Roblox game. He also had people located guests. It is said that Guest 666 was bullied in school. One day his bullies pushed him at the school room, and he was found DD 10 minutes later. He later came back to Roblox and hacked people who bullied guests. So don't bully people otherwise guest 666 might hack you. Stay safe. Spare keys. So Spare keys was a 13 year old girl who liked to play Bloxburg. One time Spare keys was role playing in Bloxburg and a car ran her over. She did not think much of it. About two hours later Spare keys went outside to buy groceries. But what happened to Spare keys next was truly horrifying. When she crossed the road, she got ran over by the same car that ran her over in Bloxburg. Comparison Some say that the one who ran her over on Bloxburg was the one who ran her over in real life. That's pretty creepy. So stay safe out there. Little Devil's Daycare So there was a game on Roblox called Little Angel's Daycare. It was a daycare role-playing game. But Little Angel's Daycare later got hacked, and it was renamed to Little Devil's Daycare. In Little Devil's Daycare the daycare was set on fire. And there were dead bodies outside of the daycare. And if you stayed in game for over one minute, Jeff the Killer would jump scare you. This is how it looked like. It is said that this is based on a true story when a teacher lit her daycare on fire. She hated the children so much that she abused them by her boss's back. When her boss found out he fired her. And she got so mad so she lit the daycare on fire. Sadly none of the children made it out alive. That's horrifying. So stay safe out there. Jenna. So Jenna was a Roblox online day tier back in 2017. But Jenna wasn't any ordinary online day tier. Because you see, Jenna would online date boys and if they broke up with Jenna, Jenna would hack them and she would find where they live in real life. She would force them to date with her in real life and if they broke up with her again, she would kill them. If you see Jenna in game, my best tip is to run away as fast as possible. Stay safe out there. Rusto10 So in 2018 there was a Roblox player called Rusto10. He was a Roblox stalker. He was most known for stalking the YouTuber Flamingo. Here is a video of Rust010 meeting Flamingo. God, I hear walking. Is Rust about to come? Oh my God, that's Rust. Oh, should I? I don't want to go in. But it is said that after a while of Rust stalking Flamingo, he started stalking Flamingo on his alt account. 
The account was called Jimmy Biz Cut 74. When people discovered this account, it became inactive. But some say that Rust creates new alt accounts every day to stalk Flamingo. Some say that Rust even tried to kill Flamingo in a video. Here is the video. Not this. Oh, someone pulled up right next to me. Let me just, hi. Somebody just pulled up next to me. I'm driving away now. I'm driving. They just literally pulled up right next to me in the middle of an M. They're following me now. Genu this is not scripted. They're following me. God. Okay, guys, literally, these people pull up next to me in an empty parking lot and just start. I know you can't see me right now. I'm sorry. And, but they just started, like, trailing me and like, waving at me. It was really weird. What we haven't heard a lot more from Russ since. But his alt accounts might be stalking Flamingo to this day. I guess we will never know. Stay safe out there. A lone traveler. So in 2018, a lone traveler was a Roblox myth. He was most known for being in a couple of Flamingo's videos. But later a lone traveler would create a game called The Plains. When you join this game it would be a little creepy but normal overall. But if you walk through the gate, a fire would start chasing you, trying to you. And if it did, you would hear creepy laughter, and then you would respawn. A lone traveler would continue releasing crappy games like The Districts, Ha 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 ha, and Sad Face. He continued creating crappy games until he went completely silent. We don't know what happened to a lone traveler since, and we don't know if he will ever come back. Stay safe out there. You bully. So in 2014 there was a girl called Coco. She was a completely normal Roblox player. Until a girl named Yubuli would start messaging her stuff like, Don't laugh at me. Why did you leave me? The bullies got me. And other creepy stuff. Coco messaged Yubuli back but did not get a response. After this, Coco tried joining Yubuli's game. Coco found nothing out of the ordinary. She tried searching a bit more but she didn't find anything so she left the game. But when she left, her avatar had gone completely black. She checked up on Yubuli and she noticed that Yubuli's avatar had changed and it now looked completely like Coco's avatar. And Yubuli had sent Coco a message that read out like this. Thank you for saving me. Coco got creeped out and distanced her from Yubuli. But around three days after the incident, Coco would go completely silent. It's unclear what happened to Coco but some say that Yubuli stole Coco's soul, and that's why she changed her avatar to look like Coco's avatar. But some people say that Coco just went inactive after the incident. Yubuli is still on Roblox, and some think that she's still out there, stealing people's innocent souls. I guess we will never know. Stay safe out there. Happy. So Happy was a creepy game on Roblox. When you joined the game there would be a bunch of creepy faces on the walls. And there would be scary and sometimes disturbing sounds playing. And sometimes people say that they would see demons in the game. At first people thought that this game was made by a troll. But people later discovered that this game was made by a Roblox developer who had lost his job. After he had lost his job, he was so stressed out at the time so he could not sleep. And he tried to go to sleep again and again and again but he could not do it. It is said that after 5 days of no sleep he started seeing demons. He got scared of the demons and he tried to hide. But they would follow him wherever he'd go. This made him so scared that he locked himself in the basement. And there he started going insane. It is said that some people went to check up on him. They rang the door to his house but no one answered. But the door was unlocked. So they stepped inside. And everything inside was trashed. They started searching for him but they could not find him anywhere, until they heard a scream from the basement. When they went to go check in the basement they were horrified of what they saw. Because when they were on the way down to the basement they saw a human-like monster. And it started chasing them, but luckily they got away. It is said that, this was most likely the same guy who locked himself in the basement. And he remains in the basement today. Now this story might not be 100% real. I guess we will never know. Stay safe out there. The Red Head So the Red Head is a story of a player who encountered a Red Head in every game they joined. 
So back in 2017 a user was playing work at a pizza place on Roblox. They were just about to deliver a pizza when they saw a red head under a tree. They did not think much of it. They just thought it was an Easter egg by the administrators. But when he got to the house that wanted the pizza, a scary red-headed figure opened the door, and it slowly turned from happy to angry. And it then jump-scared the player, and the player then got disconnected. He tried rejoining the game, but the same thing happened, over and over again, until he decided to update Roblox, but it did not work, it just made it worse. Now the head was appearing in other games, and the head would find a spot where nobody would see him, to jump scare him and kick him. The player finally had enough and decided to update Roblox again. But when they got back on Roblox, it placed them into a game by the name of the Red Corridor. And at the end of the corridor there was a red head. And the head said, I'm watching you. After this, the player was kicked and could play Roblox normally again. But the player was already done with Roblox. The player doesn't play a lot of Roblox anymore. But it is said that once when the guy was on a walk outside, he saw the same red head he saw on Roblox. But when they got closer to the head, it just disappeared. Some say that the red head still stalks the player today. I guess we will never know. Stay safe out there. Can't scale 999. So Can't Scale 999 also known as the Cursed Account, is an account on Roblox, but this account has a terrifying backstory. So in 2018, a dad bought a computer for his daughter to play Roblox on. The dad bought the computer from a mom whose son had died. When he was home alone he died in a house fire, and the son was the original owner of the computer. When the dad bought the computer, he got to hear the horrifying story by the mom who sold the computer. The mom also said that some of her son's things might still be on the computer, but the dad said that that's fine. The dad brought the computer to his daughter and she was about to sign into Roblox when she saw that she was already logged into an account. The account she was logged into was an account by the name of Cantskill999. She told her dad that she was logged onto this account, and he said that this was most likely an account created by the past owner of this computer. The daughter believed him and did not think anything of it. She decided to log into her main account when she searched Can't Scale 999 on Roblox and found the account. She decided to check it out. The account had an all-black avatar with nothing else to it. But when she checked the games made by Can't Scale 999 there was a game called Help. She was a little scared to join at first but after a while she did it, and she was horrified of what she saw. When she joined, there was a house on fire and there were loud voices screaming for help. The girl got super scared and immediately tried to leave. But when she tried to leave, the leave button did not work. So she shut down her computer. When she went to bed that night, she heard whispers saying, help, she locked me in, it's hot in here, and more. And she swore that she saw a young boy running around her room that night. And she also heard screams and other noises that night. She could not sleep anything that night, and when she woke up, her and her dad saw on the news that a mom had been arrested for setting her own house on fire and her son. At that point, they both knew. They threw out the computer never to use it again. After this, can't Scale 999 vanished from Roblox, but it is said that Can't Scale 999 is still out there haunting other players. That's super creepy. Stay safe out there. Roblox is actually going downhill. When I was just playing Roblox, I was thinking of a new video idea for my channel, and I came across this goofy game on Roblox, and I knew I had to make a video on it. Roblox used to have the best games out there like Jailbreak, Hide and Seek, Murder Mystery, but now, all you see on Roblox is this repetitive brain rot that is basically destroying the entire game. Roblox Downfall is basically starting today. Simulator games started taking over Roblox in I believe 2019, 
and it just never stopped growing since. But ever since this, Kai Senate Get a Jetta 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 Jago videos came out. So many creators of Roblox just create stupid meaningless simulator games based on brain rot concepts, Skibidi Toilet, The Chicken Nugget, and even this guy at Simulator. It's sad that not many people are realizing how doomed Gen Alpha really is when this stuff is on Roblox. What happened to awesome games with stories and meaningful stuff where it wasn't all brain rot and we actually had fun instead of grinding for pets on a simulator game for 8 hours just so we can get that one pet for 0.01% chance. Anyways, hopefully Roblox does something about this. The Roblox Game Doors is not just a game, it's a game based on a true story. When I was a kid, I experienced a real-life horror that felt just like the game. We used to visit an old hotel in our town, a place that felt enormous and eerie to me. My parents warned me to stay away from the basement, but curiosity got the better of me one October day. The basement felt like a maze, much larger than it should have been. As I explored, the lights flickered and went out and I heard a faint pst behind me. Turning, I saw a pair of glowing eyes screech. I stared at it until it disappeared, my heart pounding. I stumbled into a storage room filled with creepy costumes and masks. Something moved among them eyes. Its many glowing purple eyes stared at me, and I quickly looked away, remembering how it drains health in the game. I backed out, finding myself in another flickering hallway. Suddenly, I heard a low-pitched scream rush. I dove into a closet as it roared past, breaking lights and shaking walls. When it was over, I raced up the stairs and into the lobby, where my parents were oblivious to my ordeal. Years later, I returned, tempted to revisit the basement. I stood in the lobby, staring at the door, wondering if I dared to face those entities again. Maybe one day, I'll open that door and see if the horrors of doors still lurk below. Stay safe. There was this girl returning home from school, and she really loved to play Roblox every day. But she thought to herself, why not make a game herself? So when she created her game, she noticed a bacon with no face spawn in the middle of the sky. She didn't think much of it and moved on with her day, but when she came back, she saw her entire game get destroyed, and everything was set on fire, there were screams of people sounding like they were dying. Her account started getting messages from that Roblox player she saw earlier. After all of this her entire Roblox crashed. She tried getting back in and she could. She was able to see the messages and it was said to click on a link, and threatened her that if she doesn't click on it, her account will get deleted. She had to click on the link. The website asked for her personal information, she didn't know what was going on, but she still put all her information in. After all of that, it seemed like everything went well, but the next day, she was surprised to see that her entire account was deleted, and everything she owned was gone, her identity was stolen, and she didn't know what to do. What do you guys think of all this? A superhero that can throw you across the world to a superhero that can devour you with one punch. These are five superheroes that can devour you in seconds, starting with the Hulk. Alright, let's break it down, man. The Hulk, like, he's not your average dude we're talking next level, bro. His strength is off the charts, and when he gets angry, it's like a whole different ball game. We're not talking lifting weights at the gym, man. We're talking about flipping cars and smashing through walls like it's nothing. Imagine facing a dude who's got muscles on top of muscles, and when he's mad, it's like he taps into this crazy power source. So, here's the deal. When the Hulk goes into full rage mode, he becomes this unstoppable force of nature. His fists can turn anything they touch into rubble, and his roars alone can send chills down your spine. It's not just about strength. It's about this raw, untamed power that he wields. Now, imagine you're just a regular human, trying to step up to this green powerhouse. You gotta understand, it's not personal. It's just the way he's wired. The Hulk's strength is fueled by his anger, and when that meter hits max, there's no holding back. So, if you're even thinking about going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hulk, you might want to reconsider, bro. Cause when it comes to obliterating humans, the Hulk's got it down to a science, and it happens in seconds, no cap.
I'm always angry. Shazam, my dude, is a whole different ball game. We're talking about a kid who can go from, like, regular teen to a full-on superhero with just a magic word. Shazam, it's like this crazy transformation where he becomes this powerhouse with the strength of mythical gods. This dude's got the speed, the strength, and even some electric bolt action going on. Picture this, you're chillin' one second, and then you say the word, and boom, you're Shazam, rocking a flashy red suit, and all. He's got the wisdom of Solomon, strength of Hercules, stamina of Atlas, it's like he's got this whole buffet of superpowers. And it's not just about throwing punches. Shazam can literally shoot lightning from his hands, man. Lightning. Now, when it comes to obliterating humans, Shazam's got the finesse. He can hold back and keep it cool. But if things get serious, he can lay down the thunder. But, you know, he's more of a friendly neighborhood superhero, not really into obliterating folks for fun. So, if you're thinking about facing Shazam, it's less about getting smashed like the Hulk, and more about dealing with a lightning-powered, magical teenager who's here to save the day. It's a whole new vibe, bro. Shazam, on the other hand, brings a whole different vibe to the superhero scene, man. We're talking about a teenager named Billy Batson, who, with a simple magic word, Shazam, transforms into this full-fledged adult superhero. It's like a kid's dream come true. But with the side of responsibility. And let's not forget the dude's got a sense of humor. Shazam's all about having a good time, cracking jokes, and enjoying his superhero status. He's like the cool, funny cousin of the superhero world, bringing a different energy to the scene. So, while Superman's out there being the beacon of justice, Shazam's rocking a red suit and cracking a smile, ready to save the day with a lightning bolt or two. It's a whole different flavor in the superhero bucket, bro. <laughs> I just threw a truck at a dragon. I love my life. Dude, the Flash is like the speedster extraordinaire, you feel me? Blink. And he's already halfway across the city. That's how fast this guy is. Barry Allen, Akka the Flash, taps into the speed force, and it's like he's bending the laws of physics. We're talking running on water, phasing through walls, it's nuts. Imagine trying to catch up with someone who's literally faster than time itself. The Flash's reflexes are on another level. He can dodge bullets, catch falling debris, you name it. And it's not just about speed. He can throw lightning bolts, create tornadoes, the whole shebang. It's like having a one-man fast-paced superhero show. When it comes to obliterating, the Flash doesn't need brute force like the Hulk. He can deliver a thousand punches before you even see it coming. It's all about that speed thinking, man. So, if you're thinking about messing with the Flash, good luck keeping up, cause he'll be gone in a flash. Pun totally intended, bro. Thor, my man, on a whole different cosmic level. We're talking about the God of Thunder, wielding that mighty Mjolnir, that enchanted hammer that only the worthy can lift. First off, Thor's strength is off the charts. We're talking about a god, not your average superhero. He can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them and his combat skills are next level. But it's not just about the muscles, bro. Thor can control freaking lightning. He can summon storms, shoot bolts from his hammer, and basically, he's a walking thunderstorm. That's some serious elemental power right there. And let's not forget the Bifrost. This dude can teleport across realms in a flash. Imagine trying to outsmart someone who can literally hop between dimensions. Now, when it comes to obliterating, Thor's got the firepower. Mjolnir isn't just for show it packs a punch. He can unleash devastating blows, create shockwaves, and even fly around like he owns the sky. If Thor wants to obliterate something, he'll do it with style. But here's the thing. He's got a sense of honor, you know? He's not out there smashing for the sake of it. But if you're on the wrong side of justice, watch out. Cause Thor's coming in with the thunder, and it's gonna be epic, man. Superman, my dude, is like the Og superhero, the Man of Steel. We're talking about a Kryptonian powerhouse here. Imagine a dude who can fly faster than a speeding bullet, has laser vision hotter than the sun, and strength that can literally move planets. Superman's got it all, and then some. He's got this whole package deal of superpowers. Super strength, super speed, invulnerability you name it. And let's not forget that X-ray vision he can see through anything, man. Good luck hiding your secrets from Superman. He's like the Swiss army knife of superheroes. 
but on steroids. Now, when it comes to obliterating, Superman's got this insane level of power that could wipe the floor with pretty much anything. He's not just a brawler, he's got this moral compass, you know? Superman's all about truth, justice, and the American way. But if he needs to throw down, you better believe he can unleash a world of hurt with those heat vision beams. Or a super powered punch that can send you into orbit. So, if you're thinking about taking on Superman, just remember, he's not just a hero. He's the superhero, the guy who sets the bar for the rest of them. Obliterating? That's like child's play for the Man of Steel. Have you ever seen these? I show speed clones? Don't lie to yourself you've seen at least one. And today, we're going to take a look at this kid who took trying to be speed a little too far. <laughs> Yunkrazi's career started with this video, How to Not Be a N War. One of his most iconic videos, known for him putting baby powder on his face. I'm gonna show you how to not be a nigger. Watch till the end, yeah. Okay, first off, you open your hands like this. Open it like this and blow. I'm gonna do right here. You take this this powder. You, you put it like. Now, this would have been very helpful, but at this time using baby powder to do that would not be very useful anymore. Young Crazy didn't stop there, and he wanted to go big, so he cut his hair off. Nigga, 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 nigga. They don't call him Young Crazy for nothing. He was getting impatient, not seeing any success on his videos, so he needed to bump it up a notch, so he drank Pepsi. After almost dying from drinking Pepsi from a box, he saw that doing those crazy things will get him views. So he started a music career. Young Crazy saw what Speed was doing with music and wanted to do it on his own. He got a background freestyle song and just started rapping. Uh huh. Going to the sky, never calm me down. Niggas be playing. Don't play with me. My name is Young Crazy. I be going crazy. Who the fuck saying I ain't on top? Boy, who is you? God? Ha! It's lonely out here. Need to compete. When the song was posted, lots of fans were saying good things about his song. Oh, this one fan said, What the F is this? And that's when Young Crazy was done with music. So he moved on to reacting to videos. And this one video he reacted to will make you cry. Yeah, man. Oh, fuck, my God. Oh, oh, fuck, man. It was so sad for bro to go through such a thing that he realized he could do skits. So he made a skit on how he caught bro being gay. Why are you gay, bro? Bro, what? Bro, like, you're gay, bro. You're gay, bro. Bro, how the fuck am I gay, bro? Like... How am I gay, bro? No, bro, you're gay, bro, you're gay! After seeing his own friend being gay, he needed to change things up for himself. So he made a video of saying Daddy Chill five times. Daddy Chill. Daddy Chill. Daddy Chill. Daddy Chill. Daddy Chill. But it didn't get the attention he wanted and many people started thinking he was falling off. But that's when something horrible happened to him. Young Crazy lost his dog. He posted a video about his dog and how much he loved it. I lost my dog and shit, bro. So basically I lost my dog and cat, I mean cat cries, bro. Oh, it's, it's bad, bro. 
It sucks to hear that his dog died, and I hope Young Crazy recovers soon from this horrible situation. Nobody should have to go through this. If you want to support Young Crazy and get him to 1000 subscribers, click the link down in the description below. Anyways, much love. For those that don't know the game Dress to Impress, it's a game that lots of people play especially streamers like Queso. The game was inspired by past Roblox games like Fashion Famous, and the game has over 100,000 players playing it. But a lot of you probably don't know about the true story of Dress to Impress. So there was this girl who loved to dress for her parents, but her parents never approved of her wearing those clothes. They never cared to say that it looks great on her. All they did was ignore her, so the girl was very sad, and lots of people would think she would leave the parents. Well she did, and she was living with her cousins who actually cared about her. And when they heard of her story, they wanted to make a game based on it. So that's how the game was created. But lots of people are wondering whatever happened to the parents of the girl. Well, they got arrested for being a jerk, and they have been sentenced for 30 years in prison because of their insane actions. Hopefully they never come back. Subscribe if you don't want Chris Tyson in your house tonight. The story of the redhead is no ordinary Roblox story. There was this guy who just wanted to play some Roblox before going to bed. As he logged into the game, there was nothing he wanted to play. Until he saw this one game called Escape Redhead. He was interested, so he started playing it. Nobody but him was actually in the game though. And the guy was pretty much alone. The redhead that the guy thought he had to escape was nowhere to be seen. It was like the game broke. So the guy was bored and tried leaving the game, but it wouldn't let him. The guy even tried turning off his computer, but nothing would work. He was stuck inside the game. The guy started wandering around the area, and he found some red looking figure under a tree looking right at him. It stared at him for minutes without a single movement. The guy was of course freaked out, and left it alone. When the guy came back to see if it was still there, the redhead was gone. The guy was confused until he turned around and saw this. The guy was so scared he broke his computer, and left his house forever. Nobody knows where he went, but most likely he will never forget the redhead. What do you guys think of all this? From a girl just posting her favorite YouTuber's merchandise, this terrible Roblox YouTuber ruined his entire career so much that his whole group took down their channel, and their last post being 5 years ago, with their last post saying they will be done with making videos. The YouTuber that did this was other than Coral, and if you search up worst Roblox YouTubers his face will definitely be there. Because what he said was so wrong that he almost ended a girl's life just because of it. But what started all this? Well, it started in the beginning. So the Pals was a Roblox YouTube channel with around 3 million subscribers. This YouTube channel consisted of a lot of Roblox YouTubers like Dennis Coral, Alex Sub, and Sketch. They made great videos back in 2017 to 2019. Everything was going until randomly Coral made a tweet saying people who watch our content that are over 13 are weird. This got a lot of people upset since you should love your fans. One 17 year old go really upset since she had spent over $100 on her senior school jersey to get the pals written on it. Cork's response to it was cringe. This made the girl even more upset and she even thought of you know what. This made the leader of the pals, Dennis, to kick Coral out of the pals, then the channel was later abandoned. The pals probably will never upload again, and Coral as well because recently Coral posted a picture of this on Twitter, and then left the internet forever. Seems like he is having a normal life now, but who knows, stay safe. How this Roblox game became the scariest game in Roblox history. An anonymous user who was testing a telepath in his game, but when he walked on the telepath, it teleported him to a game known as Vault 8166. It was a secret game on Roblox where Roblox hackers hang out like cool kid, 
and 1 times 1. The game wasn't supposed to be out there for the public, but this user accidentally joined it, and the hackers weren't happy. When this player joined, he was in a long, dark hallway, and he was interested. So he stayed in the game, he walked around until he saw light. And when he was going to that light, he saw Vault 816, 6 come up to him. So he started recording, this was the video. Did you see it? Let me put it in slow speed. When the user encountered that, he left the game as fast as possible and told his friends what happened, and after 30 minutes his account was deleted from Roblox. People say Vault will come back one day haunting other players, and some say he will return in 2026. Let's hope that doesn't happen, stay safe. Roblox hackers are always roaming around Roblox, but there's more powerful hackers out there like the hacker Cryptodata. Cryptodata was a hacker back in 2017, and he was known to be behind the John Doe hackings in March. The reason people thought Cryptid Data was behind the John Doe account is because on John Doe's friend list Cryptid Data was there. But Cryptid Data wasn't just there to hack random people, he was there to hack people who said rude things to John Doe. Like saying he's bad at hacking or he's trash. All those things made Cryptid Data mad, and he started deleting account just for fun. Then Roblox caught on and deleted the account for good. But nobody knows he will come back, and people speculate he will come back and become more powerful than he ever was. So let's hope that doesn't happen, stay safe. Or else Cryptid Data will find your account and delete it forever, and you will lose all of your Robux and items you bought, and also find your other accounts and delete them as well. So you will probably never have a Roblox account again. Good luck out there. These are Roblox games based on dark rituals, starting with Blade Ball. If you don't already know what Blade Ball is, it's basically just a game where you hit balls back and forth till the last remaining player is standing. The ritual this game was based on comes in Japanese culture, it was called the seppuku, and during that ritual a samurai would perform a sword battle against one another, and whoever gets killed. It was seen as way to die with honor rather than disgrace. It was to restore families who were destroyed. Blade Ball used that ritual to its advantage and made a multiplayer game based off of it. Instead of killing using swords, use balls instead. But sadly there isn't any honoring for the loser, they just don't get a prize. But that ritual wasn't that bad as Brookhaven's inspiration. The creators were inspired by the Sufi whirling dervishes, which were a group of people who would make families to live in the same household for ages, and if they ever left, they would have to be executed. They were able to do it for a long time, and they also danced during the ritual. Brookhaven has all of those stuff, because you're basically trapped in the game forever, and have to raise a family, or you're basically cooked. Anyways, that wasn't that bad as the last game. Blocks Fruits. Blocks Fruits is a game based on the popular TV show One Piece, but what lies beneath the game is way more than just a simple TV show. It was a ritual of black magic, where they use magic powers that are unlike anything. Impossible to even happen, but was a thing for the Greeks back then. And that's all the games based on dark rituals, but which was one was the scariest? The Human Dolls of Anatoly Moscow. In 2011, a man named Anatoly Moskvin was found to have the bodies of 29 girls between the ages of 3 to 25 mummified in his apartment. But what even started it? Anatoly Moskvin was known as the ultimate expert on cemeteries in his city of Nizhny Novgorod, Russia. He attributes his obsession with the macabre to a 1979 incident when the historian was 13. One day, a group of men in black suits stopped Moskvin on the way home from school. They were headed to the funeral of 11-year-old Natasha Petrova and dragged young Anatoly along to her coffin where they forced him to kiss the girl's corpse. Many guys would have already said no and leave, but Anatoly didn't. Anatoly kissed her for a long period of time. He said in a news article, I kissed her once, then again, then again. The girl's grieving mother 
then put a wedding ring on Anatoly's finger and a wedding ring on her dead daughter's finger. My strange marriage with Natasha Petrova was useful, Moskvin said in the article. Strange, indeed. He said it led to a belief in magic and ultimately a fascination with the dead. Whether the story is even true is beside the point by now, as his disturbing thoughts would go unchecked for more than 30 years. Anatoly Moskvin's interest in the corpse kissing incident never left him, and he began to wander through cemeteries. His interest led to multiple newspapers talking about every cemetery he's been to, which was 702. But nobody even knew what was going on when he was wandering those cemeteries. In 2009, locals began to discover the graves of their loved ones, completely dug up. And for nearly two years, nobody was able to find who did this. Then, a break in the investigation came following a terrorist attack at Domodedovo Airport in Moscow in 2011. Shortly afterward, authorities heard reports of Muslim graves being desecrated in Nizhny Novgorod. Investigators were led to a cemetery where someone was painting over the pictures of dead Muslims, but not damaging anything else. This was where Anatoly Moskvin was finally caught. Eight police officers went to his apartment after they apprehended him at the graves of the Muslims to gather evidence. What they found there shocked the world. Inside authorities found life-sized doll-like figures throughout the apartment. The figures resembled antique dolls. They wore fine and varied clothing. Some wore knee-high boots. Others had makeup on, over faces Mosk Vin had covered in fabric. He had also hidden their hands in fabric. Except these were not dolls. They were the mummified corpses of human girls. When police moved one of the bodies, it played music, as if on cue. Inside the chests of many of the dolls, Moskvin had embedded music boxes. There were also photographs and plaques taken off of the gravestones, doll-making manuals, and maps of local cemeteries strewn about the apartment. Police even discovered that the clothes worn by the mummified corpses were the clothes in which they were buried. Investigators later found music boxes or toys inside the bodies of the dead girls so that they could produce sounds when Moskvin touched them. There were also personal belongings and clothing inside some of the mummies. One mummy had a piece of her own gravestone with her name scrawled on it inside her body. Another one contained a hospital tag with the date and the cause of the girl's death. A dried human heart was found inside a third body. Anatoly Moskvin admitted that he would stuff the decayed corpses with rags. Then he would wrap nylon tights around their faces or fashion doll faces onto them. He would also insert buttons or toy eyes into the girl's eye sockets so that they could watch cartoons with him. The historian said that he mostly loved his girls, though there were a few dolls in his garage that he claimed to have grown to dislike. He said he dug up graves of girls because he was lonely. He said he was single and his biggest dream was to have children. Russian adoption agencies wouldn't let Moskvin adopt a child because he didn't make enough money. Perhaps that was for the best, judging by the condition of his pack rat apartment and psychotic obsessions with dead people. Moskvin added that he had done what he did because he was waiting for science to find a way to bring the dead back to life. In the meantime, he used a simple solution of salt and baking soda to preserve the girls. He celebrated the birthdays of his dolls as if they were his own children. Anatoly Moskvin's parents claimed to know nothing of the true origin of Moskvin's dolls, even after living with him for 40 years. Elvira, Anatoly's mother, said, We saw these dolls, but we did not suspect there were dead bodies inside. We thought it was his hobby to make such big dolls and did not see anything wrong with it. Moskvin was charged with a dozen crimes, all of which dealt with the desecration of graves. The Russian media called him the Lord of the Mummies, and the perfumer, Anatoly Moskvin, was diagnosed with schizophrenia and sentenced to time in a psychiatric ward following his sentencing. Though, as of September 2018, 
he was faced with the opportunity to continue psychiatric treatment in his home. The victim's families think otherwise.